This video is part of an ongoing series exploring unique Macs for Live devices and some creative ways you can use them in your music making. If you're not sure what Macs for Live is, check out my video, What is Macs for Live and Why Aren't You Using It Yet? I'll link to that in the description. Making music with MIDI is a wonderful thing, and Live's MIDI editor gives you a ton of flexibility for creating musical parts. But sometimes you need something a little different to get fresh ideas flowing. In the realm of hardware music making, sequences reign supreme, and they present a slightly different approach to programming patterns. We can access these kinds of tools using many of the awesome Macs for Live sequences available. In this video, I want to focus on one of my personal favorites, the free MDD Snake device. Snake is a sequencer based on the Make Noise Rene Eurorack module, and it gives you a really cool analog style of sequencing patterns in live. I want to add a bass line to this basic track I've got going, so let's use Snake to do this. I've already loaded it on a track with a bass synth so I can get straight to sequencing. Snake has four separate sequences. One for notes, one for gates to trigger those notes, one for velocity, and a custom sequence you can map to modulate any parameter in live. One way to work with Snake is to program the sequences manually. Let's first add in a series of gates to trigger some notes. I also need to set the velocities of each note to something other than zero. and then add some note values to be triggered. While this is a perfectly good way to create an idea, Snake gives us a much more fun way of creating patterns. You'll notice that each sequence has a random button to the top left. Clicking this will generate a random set of values for that sequence. When randomizing the notes, Snake will choose from the full range of available MIDI notes, not necessarily in a particular key. There is a built-in quantizer, which lets you quantize the output to fit within a certain set of notes. But I find it's much easier to just use live scale MIDI effect. Now the output of Snake is quantized to our key of D minor. Let's randomize the notes again. You can restrict the range of randomization using the slider to the right of the random button. You can also randomize all four sequences at once using the random all button. Let's take this a bit further. There are additional controls for adjusting the playback of each sequence. You can adjust the direction of playback, using the back and forth options effectively doubles the length of the sequence. You can change the speed of the sequence. can adjust the number of steps in the sequence. And it's important to note here that each sequence has independent settings for each of these options, which we can use to start building polymetric patterns. Let's set the number of note steps to 11, so it only steps through 11 values. Our gates are still at the full length of 16 steps, so we end up with a polymetric pattern. Shift is used in conjunction with steps to offset the starting point of the pattern when you have less than 16 steps. Notice how now the sequence starts here. Whereas if I adjust the shift, now it starts here. Lastly, we have the incredibly cool looking snake shapes. These change the way the sequence is played through. The image for each shape gives you a hint as to how the shape will play back.
where this starts to get even more interesting is when you discover that all of these controls are actually mappable, which means I could map the max for live LFO to modulate them on the fly. Be a little careful here though, because modulating these controls at too high a rate can give live some trouble. Just because things aren't cool enough yet, even the randomization buttons are mappable. So if I unmap this LFO from the snake shapes, and I'll sync its rate to the tempo, and map it to the random all button. Now every bar, our sequence is randomized. This is a bit much, so let's just randomize the notes, not the gates. And we'll manually randomize the gates until we find a pattern we like. Let's also use the custom sequence to add a little modulation to the sound. Over on the custom sequence, I can click the map button and map this to a control in live. Also, don't forget that if I want to actually get these sequence patterns down as MIDI notes, I can always set up a new MIDI track, set it to receive MIDI from the sequences track, and record a clip to capture the raw MIDI. Snake is also great for sequencing drum patterns. Let's hop over to the drum track where I've set up Snake on an open hi-hat. In this case, I've got the gate and velocity sequences set to different lengths to create polyrhythms. I've also mapped the custom sequence to the decay of the hi-hat. For drums, the note sequence is less relevant, so I've set its length to only one step. Although you can get some interesting results by bringing the note sequencer into the mix. One issue you might run into when working with sequences in live is that, unlike a clip, I can't just stop the sequence from playing. So even when I stop this drum clip, the sequencer keeps going. To deal with this, we can use some creative automation to turn the sequencer on and off. I'll create a second clip, for the second clip I'll right click on the sequence's device activator and automate it to be off when the clip plays. Then I'll head over to the first clip and automate it to be on when this clip plays. Now I have two clips that I can toggle between to turn the sequencer on and off. So you can see that MDD Snake is a formidable tool for coming up with ideas. It's also only one of a handful of really great sequences available, so I'd encourage you to explore what's available under the sequences section at maxforlive.com. I'll include a link directly to MDD Snake in the description.